All right, the absolute beginning of uh, my rebuild on this GP1300R. You can see he reinforced underneath the rod that let go. Um, Got to take the two cases apart. I've already cleaned my entire work surface off with compressed air. Uh, blew off this entire part. It had lots of little metal shavings and stuff still in it. Cleaned it up with compressed air. Make sure it's clean. Now I'll take the two case halves apart. I've got to put the engine mounts back on. I've got them sitting right here and right here. Uh, those engine mounts do have a metal dowel rod. Let's see. Yeah, I've, I've removed them. They're in this bucket right here. There's the cylinder that he worked. So there's all my pins. Each engine mount has two dowel pins. There are also pins between the two case halves and for the jugs where they go on. You can see each one. They have two. Um, so you put your pins on. It's kind of hard to mix up which mount goes where because of the fact that uh, this little rubber piece, you know, that cover slips over that. So you can't get those confused as to what goes where. And then your four bolts. Putting that back on. It's got lineup pins, bolts. Put it back together. They were the last thing I took off. First thing I'm putting back on. Oh, the other one. Well, it's only got three bolts. Well, you know. There we go. And let's not forget your thread locker. <laughs> Before I've missed that step, thread locker on all these bolts. You don't want them coming out on you. And then the other side, same thing. So now I'm just removing the case bolts where I had to send it to the machine shop. He had to uh, have the bolts to uh, check the case for cracks, leaks, and that sort of thing. The other mounts on, I'm removing the case bolts to get ready to set the crank. Don't forget your Loctite on your bolts. Quick note while I've got this upside down before I split my case to put my crankshaft in. Uh, Yamaha, and I've noticed on Kawasaki as well, they were very good about uh, giving you your torque sequences for your bolts. And if you look on the case, there are numbers. That's the 13th and 14th Titan in there, okay? If there aren't numbers, just remember you're always going to go from the center. Now, the center won't be one of these. The center is these four here. You're going to go uh, one, two, three, four. But in this case, I see how they, yeah, that's actually how they've labeled it. One, two, three, four, and it continues on out until you get to all of your 12 millimeter bolts and those are gonna be a foot pounds of torque. I'll put that in the video when I get to that tightening part. Remembering there's one extra 12 here and look, it's number bolt number 17 in your torque sequence. Now, your little 10 millimeter bolts also are numbered. See that, one, two. Now that's gonna be inch pounds. Now if it follows through with like some of the others, it's probably gonna be where some, 78 inch pounds or something. Don't quote me on that. I'll, I'll look it up and get the exact number, but you've got a torque sequence for all of those as well. All of your little outer 10 millimeter, that's going to be an inch pounds. All these are 10 millimeter inch pounds, and they also are numbered for their torque sequence. But once again, starting in the middle, one, two, let's see if this is three and four over here. Nope, that's four, that's five and six. So they go one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's how those go. Anyway, let's pull these cases in half and set this crank. Okay, after I've gotten them apart, I feel my machine surfaces. He did a very good job of making this smooth where the repair was done. Excellent. I mean, you, 
when your your finger is very sensitive and can feel like raised or lowered edges, um, he made it smooth. Uh, so I clean one more wire wheel brush doo -doo 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 over my surfaces, uh, blow it out again with compressed air, and then I clean it with acetone on a rag, all of the machine surfaces. Make sure you didn't leave anything in these grooves where your seals are going to ride on either end, either top or bottom. Make sure they're clean. So here's my new crank out of the bag, ready to go. Well, still kind of in the bag. You'll notice the lineup pins. Uh, those are going to go over to the side. I need to move it so you can see. Here's where that pin is going to go into this bearing. This bearing is not a press fit on the uh, front. You can actually slide that bearing completely off. So it, it's not a press to fit bearing. These but, are going to, see you've got these little, on these bearings here, they're going to go, I don't know if I can show it with this thing sitting here like this, but there's, uh, there's indentations in the case where those are going to sit so that those stay in place. But um, you've got to line up your pinholes if you have them which there was one, I showed it to you in the previous part of this video. Line that up, and then you'll kick these over to the side in the little indentations that are made for them. And they're not on the bottom half of the case. So we're gonna line them up over here now. Also, when you're setting this, you've gotta go ahead and have your seals put on. When you go to set it, you need to have your seals uh, greased up and ready. So I've got to get in my gasket set, which is right there. Uh, get my seals out. Put a small coating of uh, the Yama Bond around the seal. Pop it on there. Uh, the, the two rear main seals generally have grease between them. You put the marine grease between those two seals before you go in. Now, when I build the engine also, I will fill these holes with marine grease, fill these bearings, and, and uh, I'll do that before I put the uh, seals on. I fill these with marine grease and uh, do that, and that's just, you know, it just seems wrong for me to have a dry bearing. I, I guess they get lubed by the two-stroke, but I'm not taking any chances. And that marine grease will get eat away slowly over time by the two-stroke if it does oil them. So there you go. One reason you make videos of taking stuff apart so you remember how to put it back together. But here's my two old seals. See the ears? They go together just like that. So this faces the inside of your engine. The two flat surfaces go together. Boom. Ears facing out. Your replacements are the same way. See this? No ears on this one. So that one faces inside like this. Like this. Your uh, bearing will have its its uh, little shield thing. It'll fit in that first groove. And these seals will ride in these outer two grooves like that. Just like that. That's how it's going to go in. And then your little ear pieces are facing toward the outside. And I'm going to put grease between the two. Kind of helps as a water barrier thing. And then fill and grease in here when I put it on. And the same for the for the rear, the new rear, the rear, the front seal. Excuse me. We'll have uh, I put grease in here sealant on the outer edges with a little extra dab of sealant where the two cases go together where your seals go just a little extra just a little extra and i'll put a fine coating of the yama bond four i think is what it is it looks like this it's available on amazon and i'll leave a link in the description to uh, purchase this so I've got my thin coat of Yamabond 
on on my uh, <clears throat> bottom half. Coat of Yama Bond on my seals. And then I'm going to put a coat on my top half. And we'll be setting. Um, and how I do this and why Yama Bond, I think, is a preferred, even for Honda Tech and everybody else, uh, is the creamy consistency of this stuff. It, it, uh, it, it, it isn't thick, thick, and you don't put it on thick. And how I do it is I just take it and just dot it like this. And then I go back and I make a smear of it. So I'm not putting on too much because you don't want all that excess sealant going into your engine in your build. So I do that through the whole thing. I'll do the little dot, 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 dot. And I go back and I smooth it. And that's how I seal my cases up. Uh, and this Yama Bond is superior. I did use uh, red general silicone sealant on my first Kawasaki build. It worked. But when you feel the consistency of this versus that other RTV, you'll know why people want to use this Yama Bond and it's fairly easy to get off when it's time to do a rebuild so uh, it's a superior sealant for this type of application in my opinion and I think the opinion of a lot of other uh, techs so I'll finish that set my crank bolt my cases together and get you some torque specs for that and like I said I will be going in Probably will have to use some of the excess to fill in right at these edges where those seals uh, are going to go together, where the two halves clam together. I like to have a little bit extra there on each end. Okay, so I've got my bottom. I'm going to go ahead and set my crankshaft. My seals are coated. Um, getting that thing smooth. I'm going to set that with the pins all over. To one side, let's see the side being this is the top. Uh, all those grooves, yeah, see these. So, this is gonna go like this, so I'm gonna need all those pins over on that side ready to line up, and then the one pin for this bearing straight up. I set this crankshaft. So crankshaft set. You want your pins up while you're going down so you don't score your surfaces. They're going to set over this way like this. Right up against that edge. As that top half has the uh, indentations that they set in. Now some of them are going to be tight like this one I can't move. So I'm going to have to lift the crankshaft a little to rotate the pin over. You've got to rotate all these pins over to that edge to line up. And this one um, has got to be in a perfect alignment for when the cases go together for that pin to fit in there. So that's why I say it may be easier to put the top on first because if it's not perfect, it's not going to drop in. And this also has a just a little... This bearing slips off, so yeah, might be easier to put the top half in the crankshaft first. It's certainly easier to set it into the bottom half and then put the top on, but you've got to get this alignment right. So that's what I'm working with now. Okay, I've snugged down all my bolts before I got to that step. I tapped my two case halves together with a rubber mallet to seat them. And you can watch, get this over on its side. See how I don't have a huge amount of sealant sticking out? Because I didn't use a whole lot. Just use a little bit. You gotta seal the cases up. You, you can't have air leaks between the case or you're gonna have problems. You, you'll, you'll lean out your pistons burn a hole in them. Um, 
That's the same thing that happens when these seals go bad on the end. This is what your seal is going to look like on the front. The outer gold facing out. And the lip facing in to seal it. And this is your seal here. With the little four things. Everything's sealed up. You can watch your cases as you're going together. If you, you're just kind of snugging right now. We're not torqued yet. But you can see my cases are tight against one another. I don't have light shining through. Um, and I'm just snugging it. Just snugging it right now on both the 12 and the 10 millimeter bolts. Uh, and how I do that, I'll just, you know, I choke up on the wrench like this. I'm not, I'm not way down here where I can get a lot of leverage. I'm way up here. I never spin nut bolts back on with an impact. I don't do that. It's too easy to strip stuff out, especially when you're working with aluminum. I use hand tools. I will take them apart with an impact, but I never put them back together with one because I don't want to create more problems for myself. Now we'll go with our torque sequences. I'm going to do the large uh, bolts first. Like I said, if they weren't numbered, you would uh, always go from your center and working your way out as you torqued your bolts down to spec. And then I'll go with the 10 millimeters, setting them to their inch pounds of torque. And then that'll be a complete, um, well, not quite complete bottom end rebuild because we still have to put the reed cages back together and back on. And that's part of the bottom end as well. But almost done with the bottom end. Let me get those torque specs. Okay, so this converts to 78 inch pounds or 6.49 da 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 foot pounds from the Newton meter given on the uh, case because your, your spec is given there. This converts to 20.094 da da da. So I'm just going to do these at 21. So I'm going to do 21 foot pounds. And it's, uh, it's, you know, 27.4 Newton meters, 8.8 .8 Newton meter for these. So 78 inch pounds, 21 foot pounds. Good to go. Do your torquing by the numbers. All you, if you can count, you can do this. Follow your numbers, torque your way out. I've already snugged them all down, so now we're gonna torque them. I gotta get my torque, there's my inch pound wrench, I gotta go get my foot pound wrench. Okay, we flipped it over. I always double check my torques before I flip it over. The next step is to uh, put your uh, cylinders on, your pistons on, excuse me, and then your cylinders. Um, so wrist pins slide through your circlips, your pistons are going to have an arrow. The arrow is going to point toward the exhaust side. This is the intake side. This is where it's pulling all that fuel in. The exhaust side's up here on the top of the cylinders and blowing out the exhaust. So that arrow is going to point toward the exhaust. Sometimes they'll have an arrow and they'll tell you to point toward the front of the engine with that arrow on some engines. Uh, with these, the, uh, you've, you've got an arrow pointing out toward the exhaust side. If you line them up backwards, your rings will catch and break. Uh, if you put the pins one, if the piston's 180 out, so you'll tear up your engine really quick. Uh, when I build these, I go ahead and I clean all my machine surfaces again with some acetone. These are just some gaskets that are gonna go in there. I prefer the metal kits, the cheap gasket sets. You'll see, oh, they're only 60 something dollars. Well. They're $60 because they come with paper gaskets to go here. Uh, I had one of those tear up on a Kawasaki build. I haven't bought paper gaskets since. So I stick with the little bit better quality uh, gasket sets if I can. I only use them if I can't get anything else. So let's go ahead, get my pistons out. I've got all three new pistons. I could have reused two, but I was going to have one brand new piston two used pistons so I've got two good 
GP1300R pistons for maybe a future build, maybe to sell. I don't know.